Greetings, hello, it is V from V11 Tarot and V11 Crystals. Today's pick a card reading is on if your person is missing you and how can we create the missing, the longing, the craving you. Um, those were, that's what um, I really wanted to do. This card, th this pick a card, I, I saw this cool video on how to um, make them miss you and I got a lot of cool tips. And so I'm gonna put my spin on it, but with more positive. I don't wanna make anybody do anything. I want to create, um, help you create moments <clears throat> or good memories so that your person thinks about you constantly and misses you and you know wants to bring you back into their life or be close to you again, work on being close to you. So if you're interested in that, keep watching. I have three pals here for you. Number one, here is your little beautiful icon. Pal two, here's your icon, your image. And pile three, here is yours. I like to switch them up. So let me know that you visited by leaving a comment below. I can't wait to see what our messages say, what your messages say, and um, Please do take a moment to collect with, connect with your intuition before you choose. And if you want to pause the video, that, that's a freaking awesome too. I'll see you over in the piles. Thank you so much for being here. And you have a wonderful, beautiful, prosperous rest of your year into the new one. Number one, you're first. All right. What's going on, pile one? I'm going to actually add some lights here. Um, to highlight what is happening here on the cards. Um, I mean, what's happening here on the table. Hope you like that. I hope it's not too uh, dark for you or too bright for you. All right, so let's see. Pal one, how can we... Well, first of all, is your person missing you? Let's answer that right away because I know that's what you came here for. Thank you for your patience. I just wanted to display all these cards here so you can see them. Okay, so for right now, this spread right here talks about how we can create that missing energy. You know, um, this is the advice. Now let's see. This is what you came for. This is what you came for. You wanted to see if your person was missing you. Let's answer that right away. Does your person miss you? Does your person miss you? Pile one, does your person miss you? You have the Queen of Wands. Does your person miss you? You have the Temperance. Does your person miss you? Oh. And you have the Strength card. All right, these cards popped out. You got the Sun and you got the Death. Okay. So for right now, I feel like your person does miss you. But I think your person also tries to find ways to distract themselves so that when they're really deeply in thought with, about you, um, they're not, it's not such a sad missing, you know, like, oh man, you know, like that um, anxious attachment uh, missing. There's such a thing, I've been doing a lot of research. So there's different types of uh, um there's different, uh, yeah, there's a different, there, there are different types of attachment styles. You have the anxious, the secure, and, oh my gosh, I forget. There's three of them. Yeah, look them up if you, if you want more information on that, because I, yeah, I'm learning. And so, your person, I feel, has a good way of, yeah, your person has good tools to help them combat those heavy, deep longings for you. So it's either by, you know, burying themselves in work, taking care of the responsibilities around the house, uh, spending time with family, friends, you know, immersing themselves in their hobbies, uh, just pushing your, the thoughts about you aside. So yeah, whenever they do get those thoughts, it's like, nope, let's, 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 let's dead it. Let's end this. Let's uh, think, let's get, stay constructive. Let's do something constructive with my time. Temperance, yeah, they know how to 
you know, um, manage their expectations, their emotions, uh, their feelings for you until they get to see you next. So that's healthy. That's a healthy attachment style. You are the fun in their life, by the way. So it's like when they come together with you, they it's like all positive and uplifting. See, they, they, they're practicing their willpower, their strength, their inner per strength, their personal power, so that they don't miss you. And it's so sad and saddening, you know, like anxious, you know, separation anxiety. It's not like that, you know. So now we're getting into the part where you can, we can help you create those moments so that they miss you, you know, in a healthy way or so that, you know, for some of you, maybe this is just something that you can take with you since we do see the missing, but to, you know, I guess, uh, what's the word, um, to prolong this into your, your connection, into your, your relationship for many years to come, this is what you can do to help create those attachment, those healthy attachment moments um, when you're not together, you know? So the first thing here, or when you are together, so that it, um, it carries out and this person is always thinking about you in a healthier way. So the first thing here is the Two of Swords. So um, this tells me, you know, you both, okay, so you, in order for this person to, you know, want those memories, with, moments with you again, in order for them to look forward to the next meeting, you need to be clear on how you want this relationship to look. Uh, be very clear, be very consistent, be, be very decisive. Like, um, I think this also tells me about, like, consistency. Be very, um, yeah, consistent with, you know, when you get guys meet. This person loves clarity. So they want to know, you know, in order to miss you, okay, when, it, when am I going to see you next? Can we meet every Friday? Can you meet every Monday? Can we meet um, twice a week? Can we meet three times a week? Can we go? Can we go traveling once a month, or every quarter? Can we go out for a date night every every three months? Can we uh, have a, a relationship check in every three to six months? You know, I think they like to look know what to look forward to. I think that's gonna create a longing. Like, oh, okay, I have six days to see you. All right, let me start distracting myself, working on myself. Let me start. Um, thinking about what I'm going to do and what we're going to do next time we see each other. You know, give them something to look forward to. I think that's going to be very, very uh, helpful for them. Uh, if, they're, if they don't see a next, you know, meetup day, then it's like, oh my gosh, am I going to see her? Am I not? Are they, uh, is she bored with me? Is he tired of me? It, it, you know, whatever. You, you want to give some, a peace of mind with that. That's what, that's what this two of is telling me. The fool here, they want you... They want, not, they don't want you, no. They want the moments to be very fun, very spontaneous, very new. So that's going to create also longing. Like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to see what we're going to do next. I can't wait, I can't wait to see what you're, what you're going to wear next and, and what, you know, what movie we're going to see or what dinner we're going to have together or if we're going to cook dinner together or if, if you're going to introduce me to your family or if we're going to visit my family, whatever. This love card tells me that they look forward to being passionate with you, to sharing their feelings with you, to, you know, ro like romance you and you romance them. Be together in an emotional way, you know, intimate way. Um, presence, like you guys being present in the moment, enjoying each other's company, sharing hugs and kisses and all that all that fun stuff the next thing here says take your time so this person you know this person is in no rush this person wants to build up you know like uh when you guys come together they look forward to you guys just being in the present moment not rushing to what you're gonna do five hours from from then um just taking mo minute by minute with you, hour by hour with you, soaking it in, slow and steady, f having fun, talking, and, you know, just 
having a good time. You just, you know, whatever time you guys spend together, this person's going to want to be with you. I think that's what they also look forward to. And that's what's going to create a missing. If you're rushing, oh, okay, I have a itinerary. At 9 o'clock, we're going to do this. At 12 o'clock, we're going to do this. At 3 o'clock, we're going to do this. 5 o'clock, we're going to do this. And then I'm out. They don't, that's not what they're about. They just want to go through the day with you, minute by minute, moment by moment. That's what they look forward to, just seeing what seeing what you guys can come up with, what you can create together. This person is very passionate, very loving, very sensitive too. And they look forward to you being in that being in that energy as well. Um, very relaxed energy. They like your relaxed tone. That's what they look forward to because maybe they have a chaotic life and when they come to you, you're, you you zen them out, you peace them out. Just being with you, talking with you makes them feel so good. You have consciousness victim mentality. Okay, so what's going to make you guys, what's going to make your person miss you is the fact that you don't talk about negative problems. Woe is me. Oh my gosh, feel sorry for me. Give me your pity. This person wants peace. This person doesn't want drama. And I think that's what also is going to cause this person to miss you because you're bringing peace, you're bringing joy, you're pre you're bringing grace, <clears throat> love, and passion, and it's all positive. So that's what's gonna make them want to be in your energy more. If you come with this energy, they're gonna be like, okay, you know what? I'll see you in a month. I can't deal with that. It's too much. I can deal with you in increments, small increments. You know. So I think if you don't come with this um, drama or stress. If you cause the person to feel like this, they're going to probably want to have more space, you know? They're not going to be able to miss you because when they associate you, I'm not saying this is what you are. I'm just saying if they think if they think about all the times that you spend together and most of the times it's negative, they're going to associate you with something very negative. So we want to associate ourselves with something positive so that... They're, you know, you're creating the, the missing moments, the missing energy of like, oh, let's be together again. You have uh, bonds. Yeah, so they look forward to bonding with you, connecting with you on a deep level, having heart-to-heart -heart conversations. And that's what's going to foster a craving for you because they can't wait to connect with you again in that way. They can't wait to hug you or chill on the, on the sofa and just play board games, drink tea, conversate, watch a movie or something. Healing. Oh my gosh. This is awesome. So for you, I feel like to help foster a, a, a longing for, for your connection again for another meetup is the fact that you guys can heal each other. You guys can. That's what I was getting. I was getting that with the love and taking your time. Oh yeah, the bonding. You know, like you guys come together and it's explosive. It's fun. It's positive. It's exciting. And yeah, you got the, the the sun. The sun is very healing. That vitamin D. And then you also got the Queen of Wands. That this, it's like, that's interesting. Queen of Wands with the love. Very attractive energy. This person is very attracted to you. So it's only, it's only a matter of time until they want, you know, to be with you again. So this Queen of Wands, you hold, hold a lot of power with your sensuality, with your estrogen, your testosterone. I don't know. This person craves you already. So it's like, how can we foster and continue that? You got the healing. Yeah, so be always in each other's energy. You guys, you know, you guys, it's like being with you. They forget all about their troubles, all about their anxieties, their stress, stressful days before they get to see you, you know? You're very, very healing, just like the sun. I got to put that out here because... The sun, you got the moon back there. So be their clear vision. Be their brand new day. You have angel remembrance. Oh, that's beautiful. So create beautiful memories, and that's what's going to make them miss you more. That's what's going to create those longing moments of, man, I can't wait to see her again. Man, I can't wait to hear his voice again. Man, I can't wait for us to laugh at a, a movie again or go to a show again. Man! You know, make a plan. Oh, wow. Make a life plan. Wow, that's interesting. I really like this. This make a plan. It says it's time to get your act together and plan out what you're going to do with your life. Then a 12-hour video game session to reward yourself. All right, this tells me 
that if you have, yeah, that's what I was saying with the Two of Swords. If you have some kind of goal together to achieve, if you have some kind of um, calendar set up for you guys, you know, like every Friday we go, th we do this, every Sunday we do this, and then I'll see you again next Friday, or every Monday, every Wednesday, every Friday, whatever. If there's like some kind of goal or a schedule, not by like the day, like by the minute, by the hour. I mean like something to look forward to on the calendar. Like Fridays, those are our days. And Tuesdays, that's when we do this. And um, if you make a plan and you give something, you give the other person something to look forward to, they're going to want to look forward to that. They're going to be like so excited and eager to get to that day because they know that you bring them this and they want more of it. More of it. The next thing here is communion. Yeah, coming together. So how can you foster those moments to come together by, you know, making more dates and, and doing fun things, not just getting together to watch shows all the time or not just getting together to, you know, text on your phone side by side. This is you creating those freaking moments that you will be, it will be in your memory for the rest of your lives. Like, oh my gosh, remember when we slipped on a banana peel? Maybe we went out to, to dinner and we, and we bumped into the, the person we saw last time. Remember we, we, uh, we went on a four-hour walk. Remember when we, uh, cr we cooked together. Like, creating those freaking memories is gonna, what's going to make them miss you more. <sighs> you have psychic connection. So this tells me you guys need to uh, figure out a way to connect um, intellectually and spiritually. Like, um, you know, gazing into each other's eyes, really connecting on a deeper level, talking about spirituality, talking about synchronicities. You know, maybe you guys share ESP moments. Maybe you guys see the same angel numbers. You know, maybe look look up what those angel numbers mean together, see how it applies to your relationship. Like, maybe this is saying, you know, connect on a spiritual level because it's already here physically, you know? All right, so that's how I'm going to leave this. I uh, will bless you with a... A wish and a fortune cookie. Oh, I'll see what comes out first. Oh, boy. All right, we already have winners here. We have, you have the power. We already talked about that Queen of Wands. The Queen of Wands, yes, she is very magical. She is very witchy as well. Give her a cauldron and she'll know how to whip up a batch of healing potions. And you do have healing here, by the way. Healing! Oh, get out of here. What the frick? <laughs> I just said healing. Oh, and yeah, healing twice. Oh, get out of here positive change see you you have such a positive essence about you and that's what makes them want and miss you more you take care you have a beautiful day and let me know if this resonates if you want more videos like this with your answer in the beginning and then some solid advice to follow let me know in the comments and i would love to provide that for you i'm doing a lot of research on relationship topics and I'm getting a lot of um, good inspiration from them. So let me know and I can give you my spin on them. Take care and we're going to head on to pile number two. Alright, pile number two, you're next with this lovely stack right here. Thank you so much for being here. If you're new, please subscribe. Thank you for always spending time with me if you are not new here. And uh, let me know how you're having, how your, how your week is going, how your month is going, how your season is going. And I thank you so much for your energy exchange. All right, let's do this. Whew, let's let's figure this out. You have nine of swords here. So first of all, let me just uh, hold on. Let me let me put all the cards on the table, and then I'm gonna uh, dive into your message. Okay, friends. So let me fast forward this part. All right, pile number two. Thank you so much for letting me read for you. You have a beautiful rest of your season and send you healing energy. Before we start, this is my Angel Hearts Messages Oracle and my Winter's Embrace Oracle for sale on our eBay, Etsy, and Instagram shops. So let's begin. Let's do this. All right, so the first thing first, now you got. Now that we got your... Um, your, if your person's missing you out of the way, this is how we can create a way for them to, you know, look forward to those moments and really think about you often and all that fun stuff. So the first thing here I have, here's the Nine of Swords. How can we help them miss you or long for you, want to be with you again? Nine of Swords tells me that 
when they associate the thought of you, they want it to be positive. We want it to be positive. We want them to think positive thoughts about us. So how can we do that? By creating those fun, positive moments together, those you know, conversations that always, you know, uh, lift you up. It, it's fun to engage in and, um, you know, fun, fun, you know, moments together, like doing things together, like, you know, creating those bonding moments, like cooking together, playing board games, watching shows together, traveling together, meeting each other's families, all that fun stuff. Now, the Niners host tells me, it, you know, if this, if your person associates you with, a lot of tense energy, um, anxiety, very insecure, um, negative energy. They're always going to say, you know what, I need space. I don't, you know, I'm not looking forward to the next meetup. I'm not looking forward to us, you know, dating again or going out for the next date because every time we get together, it's very negative and I don't know if I have the energy for that. So if you are always, uh, you know, doing positive things, speaking positive ways about each other and you, you know, on your own time going through your emotions and lifting yourself up and building your own confidence, reassuring yourself and, you know, uh, being very independent and emotionally, emotionally regulating yourself. By the time you get to meet this person again, it's always fun because you already did the work on your own time. Now, it's different if you're going through something. You want your person to be there for you. Obviously, like I would, I would assume that, you know, that's what partners do. They're there for each other. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying if you're constantly talking bad about people, you're constantly you know, like, so negative about the world and always saying, man, I, no, nothing bad, good ever, or nothing good ever happens to me, nothing, I'm always getting the short end of the stick, woe is me, woe is me, woe is me. You come with that mentality all the time when it's time to date your person. They're going to associate you with that lack mentality, that insecure mentality, that, um, you know, uh, like, very stressful, anxious mentality and it's going to be hard for them to be there for you in that way because they want they want positive moments with you they want good memories with you they might not even have the energy to hear you complain about the fact that your hair is not this color or that you haven't lost weight yet or gained weight yet or that you uh don't have the perfect car yet or like whatever the case is they want to associate you with positive uh emotions so if you're bringing that, they're going to always be thinking about you. They're going to always want to tap into that energy so that they can feel good about you and the relationship and themselves, feel good when they're with you, feel happy when they're with you, all that fun stuff. Judgment, yeah, so this is like you changing the energy around you guys. You know, you having your, your wake-up calls. Like, you know what, I really appreciate you. I appreciate this relationship. Like, you guys appreciating each other. If you show appreciation, I don't know why I'm getting that with the judgment card, but it's like a, 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 like it's like the angels are opening their arms to you to say, look, this is a beautiful relationship. Cherish it. Cherish it. Judgment day is here. Let's do a good deed. Let's treat each other well. Let's put our all into this relationship and also receive your person's all. It's a give and, give, equal give and take here. This is a relationship from the angels, from the up above, from spirit. And, and it's saying once you change your perspective and you appreciate your relationship, that it's a divine connection and you come with gratitude, your person is going to feel the same way and they're going to share the same emotions and they're going to want to be with you because they see that you value the relationship. They see that you want to be with them. They see that you're pouring positivity into the relationship. And that gives them that aha moment, like, man, you know what? I, I can't wait to be in this person's presence again. I can't wait to exchange emotions and conversations with her or him. I can't wait to uh, build a life and, and connect more spiritually and see how our, our love grows and evolves over time. I can't wait. You know, you want to create those moments. This could also say maybe you guys would even feel more connected spiritually. So doing spiritual practices together. I don't know what that is. It can be going to church together, praying together. It can be meditating together. It can be doing tarot together. I don't know. Whatever 
uh, spiritual uh, kick you're, you're on, whatever floats your boat, it's same incorporate them into that as well because that's what's going to bond you even deeper. You got the tranquility. Oh my gosh, this is what I'm saying. You know, the judgment tells me about like, I feel the angels coming through saying, look, Cupid is here, the angels are here, your ancestors are here, and they're blessing this relationship. You are safe, you're protected, you're right where you need to be, you're who you, who you're need to who you're needed to be with. Let's bring in that peace. And you got your angel here right here saying, look, this connection is deep. Let's value it. Let's co co uh, uh, congratulate it. Let's be grateful for it. Let's um let's have fun together. Let's let's bring peace. And that's what I'm saying. Nine of Swords. If you're bringing Nine of Swords, they're not gonna be one. They're not gonna want to be in that energy. They're not gonna want to look forward to the next Nine of Swords, which is anxiety, stress, sleepless nights, nightmares. Uh, you know, even like panic attacks and paranoia. You don't want that tense energy when you think about your person, and that person doesn't want to think about that when they think about you. So you have tranquility. If you bring in peace and joy, they're gonna want to be attracted to your energy they're gonna want to attract you right back and bring you right back to their home or you you back into their home or bedroom I don't know you got mama Kocha water so they want to share emotions with you they want fluidity they want things to be flowing in and out of your relationship going with the flow sharing emotions all that fun stuff you have cut so, wow, interesting cut. So, cutting the tension, cutting the drama out, leaving things away. If you have a, a friend, if you're constantly bringing a friend with you, every time you guys meet and that friend is always uh, uh, dissing your, your, your mate, your partner, your lover, they're not going to want your friend to come over anymore because that person is very negative. That person is very emasculating or womanizing. I don't know. I don't know. And so they're not going to want anything negative that's coming with you to to meet up if you're if you're bringing a positive friend or family member they're all about that so cutting whatever that doesn't serve this relationship that's best that's what's going to make this relationship prosper if you're coming to the relationship also with you know not feeling secure in this connection and you're like do you love me? Do you want me? Do you miss me? Uh, um, how come you don't text me? How come you, if you come with that, that's also creating nine of swords. That's causing stress. So let's cut some certain certain negativity things away. Work on that shadow stuff on your own time. Think about why am I feeling like this person doesn't love me? Why am I feeling like because if they don't text me every five, five, every five minutes that they, they're not thinking about me or loving me or wanting to be with me? You think about, you, you do that shadow work on your own time because that person is probably thinking, man, I love pile number two. But you're thinking, how come you don't text me five minutes if you love me? You know, so those are the things that you need to work on so that you don't bring that into this connection. And also, you, if you feel that way deeply, then maybe you need to talk about it with your person. And then your person can say, that's not how I feel. And then you squash it, you know? You, then you're like, okay, now I feel assured. And that's that. Don't need to be reassured. Not, I'm going to tell you what to do. But if you're constantly needing to be reassured every time you guys get together, this person's going to start questioning. Like, is this how it's going to be for the rest of our lives? You constantly need me to tell you that I love you, that I appreciate you, that I want to be with you. Even if I don't text you every five minutes or five hours. Is that how it's going to be? Because that's bringing me stress. You know, like just, you know, you do your shadow work. You work on yourself so that you guys are solid in this connection. And, of course, voice your concerns, you know, and, and try to work through it together. The next thing here is impassive. Okay. Impassive. Let's see. I don't know. I don't know how that pertains to this real, this, uh this reading but I'm gonna clarify you know me I'm gonna I'm gonna get to the bottom of it let me see what why is this impassive card here I feel oh we got the tower okay all right this makes sense so the impassive cards oh clarifying the nine of swords tell and the tower tells me that it's okay to talk about heavy topics it's okay to um you know, rock the boat a little bit, even if you think you're going to bring on stress. If it's something that, if you're, con okay, for some, for others of you, 
this is another message. There's a there's a there's a spectrum, okay? You have the spectrum of of a, a, you have a dramatic nine of swords spectrum. Woe is me, nothing good happens to me. Oh my gosh, my nails look like they're ratchet. Do you love me? Do you hate me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Oh, tell me that you love me. How come you don't text me in five minutes? When are you gonna uh, bring me to this place? When are you gonna do this? How come you don't you don't say you love me? Blah blah. blah. That's that type of um, emotional anxiety or anxious detachment or att anxious attachment. What was me? Ah, just stressing out. But then you have the other spectrum of the nine of swords, you know, where you, you know, you kind of, you, you're going through your stuff in your own life, right? And, or you have concerns about your person. And maybe you're thinking, well, I shouldn't bring those up because you're saying I shouldn't bring stress. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying if you have, you know, issues with yourself and you're constantly feeling you're, you're constantly crying over spilt milk or you're constantly crying over the things that you're lacking in your life and it has nothing to do with your person and you're constantly bringing that to your person's attention you're constantly wanting your person to hear you out for five hours talking about what you're complaining about that's going to bring your person uh, detachment they're going to want to detach they're going to want to space themselves because, because they can't they can't deal with it you know, they want to talk about positive things. How does it pertain to this relationship? Those are the things they want to talk about. So if you are feeling the nine, nine of swords about this connection, let's say your person is doing something that you're not, you're not fond of or, you know, they, they're, I don't know, they're, they, they picked up a, a bad habit. And you're like, uh, I, I don't think this is a good idea for you. This is just what I'm feeling. This is what my advice is. Then, obviously, I would say, yes, absolutely, bring it to their attention because it's bothering you and you're concerned. So it's saying it's okay to rock the boat. If something is going on and you're concerned about your person and you're feeling really bad about what they're doing or if you see the bigger picture and they're not able to see it, whatever. If something's going down and you or you're feeling a certain way, if your person's not showing up how you need to, them to show up, if you don't feel like they're being faithful to you, whatever the case is, it's saying, okay, it's okay to rock the boat. It's okay to bring up these concerns because they are a problem in your relationship. It's something that you both uh, could work through together. That's different. That's a different nine of swords energy. So it's, it's saying, don't be, you know, impassive is bringing me to the passive aggressive uh, energy. Like you just passively saying what's on your mind. You passively... Uh, hoping that this person would change just by beating around the bush a little bit and just subliminally t uh, telling a person the problem. Um, it's saying just cut straight to the point. Yeah, get straight to the point and just tell them how you're feeling and get over this um, together. You know, work, work through this obstacle together. The next thing here is the leave relationship thing. So um, how can we cultivate the missing, the longing, it, it's if we, if we give them space to. If we're constantly, you know, hanging out, if we're constantly texting them every five seconds, every five minutes, every five hours, if we're like calling them all day long, if we're emailing them all day long, if we're saying, let's hang out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then leave Saturday for our, our hobbies, this person might feel like, oh man, but I miss my independence, I miss my me time. So in order for them to, you know, enjoy your company again, you got to give them space, leave the relationship temporarily. I'm not saying divorce them or cut cut them out of your life completely or, or break up with them. None, none of that. I'm saying space is of the essence. Space helps you miss someone, anyone. If you give yourself uh, five days without drinking your favorite tea, you're like, man, I miss that that spicy peppermint pumpkin spice taste man when's the next one when's my next shipment coming in of course so a little bit of space and distance goes a long way very soon yeah 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 looking forward anticipating the next meetup if you guys give each other a, a nice like um you know uh time frame of the next for the next meetup like hey let's get together every five days every four days Let's do something every weekend. It gives them that build up like, oh my gosh, I can't wait for the next one. If, if you give them something to look forward to. If you leave them up in limbo like, oh, when's the next time? When's the next day? When are you free? It's going to make, a, it's going to cause a little bit of like uncertain energy. Like, I don't know when I'm going to see them next. So I'm going to try not to get too attached because we don't have any consistent schedules in place. But if you give them like, guess what? Every Friday, you know, I'm free. 
Every Monday I'm free too. Then it's like, oh my gosh, I get to miss you in between, you know? I get to work my way to the next meetup. I get to work on myself, work on my hobbies, and do my thing because I know that I'm going to carve time that specific Friday or Monday to be with you. When you're asking for what happens soon in a happy way. Protection. So protecting your energy, not giving so much of your energy, not taking so much of their energy. Um, so if you're expecting them to text you every minute or every hour on the hour, it's like how can they grow to miss you if you're constantly giving them your energy or you're taking their energy. Let them do their thing, let them work on their hobbies or crafts, be with their family and you do the same. And then you show that you're both independent and you do things on your own time. And then when you come together, you can share those moments. Like, hey, this is what I did for the week. And this is the cool thing that I was working on, you know, etc. You have the success card here. It says your angels are reminding you of ideas and thoughts you're intuitively receiving. Trust your inner knowing and avoid negative opinions of others. This tells you that your person is always thinking about you. <clears throat> and so to create the always is to make sure it's always positive. And you see, it even says, trust your inner knowing and avoid negative, negative opinions of others. So if you're, you know, talking bad about other people, they don't want to hear all that. If you're talking bad about um, whatever, all the time, they're going to be like, oh my gosh, every time we get together, she's always complaining, always nagging, always lecturing, always blah, blah, blah. You know, you want to associate positive emotions every time they see you and when you see them. So make sure they're, they're doing the same, not just you taking care of, uh, you know, you coming positive. Make sure they're also being very positive because you want to look forward to seeing them just as much. You have altitude, so rising above any uh, tense energy, you know? And if you have any concerns, like I said, let's, let's, let's get together at the table. Let's talk about it. Let's get through it. Let's rise above it so we're not feeling tense in our minds <clears throat> every time we come together or every time I think about this person, uh, you know, or rising. And this also could be like, you know, you judgment with the hot air balloons. Like this could be very spiritual again. So how can you connect spiritually? You got the angels here, by the way, you got angels, angel wings. All right. So let's see. Well, how can I bless this connection? What can I give you to help you? Wow. Okay. So the first thing here is truth would be revealed. Yes, completely be honest with your person about any any concerns, any feelings, uh, goals that you guys want to incorporate into your relationship, into the future. Um, you know, ask, ask your person questions, let them get to know you better. Uh, I'm sorry, let, let them get to know, let, oh my gosh. Ask them questions so that they let you get to know them as well. So as much as you're speaking, make sure you're listening as well. They have a lot of truth and they're probably wanting you to ask. They're probably wanting those conversations with you. Things will cool down so you guys will always, always overcome your obstacles. You have a lot of snow in these cards. I like it. It's like, it's just very refreshing. It feels very like, like cool. It's cute. cool as a cucumber. You guys, you know, you guys are just chill, chill energies. You got abundance here. May you have an abundant relationship. May you guys be together for a long, long time. Forever even. If this is the kind of relationship you're looking for. Powerful voice. May you speak your truth if you're needing to. Patience. Yeah, be patient with this person. You know, uh, if you guys can't get together frequently as much as you would like. Uh, patient, just be patient and um, see if the schedule can change. Work with your person on that. And debt paid. I feel, you know, this debt paid. I feel like it's good karma. This person, you you were meant to meet this person. It's good karma. Debt paid. You put in the work and now the universe is blessing you with this. And that's what I said with the judgment. You got the angels here, angel wings. So treat it as such. It's a spiritual connection and it should be valued and respected. Okay, that's what I have. And protect it as well. You have protection. Thank you so much for watching. You have a beautiful rest of your your day, your year, and a, a, proper, a prosperous new one. If you like any of our decks, this is, I, like I said, Winter's Embrace, Angel Hearts, Messages. Um, everything's always linked to my Etsy shop. This is a fortune cookie oracle. And the wishes. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one. 
Hello, pile number three. Hello, hello. Welcome to your reading. Thank you so much for joining me. Let's see what, um, if your person's missing you. So these, let me, uh, okay, so let me break it down. So the first uh, group of cards I'm going to use is to answer your question, is your person missing you? And then we're going to get into how we can create more missing energy. How we can create and foster uh, more beautiful moments together so that this person is constantly thinking about you and constantly waiting for the next meetup, the next date, the next interaction, the next phone call, the next uh, d dinner, the next uh, travel time, I don't know. So um, that's what this is for, but let me answer your question first because that's what you came to this pick a card for, so let's get into it. I've been doing a lot of uh, re research on relationship topics. And I thought, you know what, I can incorporate them into my pick of cards and try to help people and give my spin on uh, those heavy topics that we're all asking about. So, let's see. Let's answer your question first. Does your person miss you? Two positives means yes. Two negatives means no. Does your person miss you? Pile number three. Pile number three is energy only. Does your person miss you? Does your person miss you? Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. That is so in insane. Wow, you got the Empress and the Emperor, the King of Wands and the Page of Cups. This is a big fat yes. In fact, they even think of you as their perfect match, their queen or their king. They feel whole, they feel complete. They feel like you're part of the family. Absolutely, they miss you. They probably feel like they're in their power when you guys are together. When you're not together, it's like, oh, what do I do with myself? What do I do? Um, how can I hold down the fort? Man, I can't wait to be with my counterpart again. Man, I can't wait to hold the fort together. Man, you know, they have, uh, this is very uh, healthy though. So when they're not with you, they still feel like you guys are a team. But they feel stronger when you're there by, them side, by their side. And it could also be, you know, having you by their side doesn't cause them to worry about you. Like, is she all right? Is she driving safe? Is he okay? Is he whatever, you know? Page of Cups, yes, wanting to share love with you, send messages to you, wanting, you know, like wanting to hear from you. Okay, now we're going to get into how we can create those moments so that they constantly think about you, constantly want, look forward to the next meetup. You have the King of Pentacles. So not only do you have the King of Wands in that deck, you have the King of Pentacles. <laughs> this is awesome. So the King of Pentacles tells me um, how you can help foster those missing moments is to feel grounded in this connection. If you feel secure and grounded, then this person is going to feel that confidence, feel that security that you're radiating. They're going to feel like, yep, I'm your man because you're making me feel like I am. You don't feel like you need to be reassured all the time. Yep, I'm your man, you're my woman, or I'm your woman, you're my man. You were solid. <clears throat> if you solidify your feelings or you come with confidence, security, you come with like, uh, you know, your own independence as well. This person is going to know where they stand. They're going to feel like the King of Pentacles or you're going to feel like the King of Pentacles. You're going to feel so, like you got it all together. You got your earthables, your tangibles, your material stuff together, your feelings. You got everything in order and they want that with you. They want to feel stable. If you bring that, they're going to they're gonna rock it. They're going to be like, yep, I'm your king. Um, we the fortune, yeah, if you guys are, wow, this is a divine, faded connection, I have to say. Not only is the emperor and the emperor, empress and the emperor here, and the king, you got the wheel of fortune. So this connection is very, I feel like it's, it's continuous. Like you guys, I don't know if you guys have met in many, many lifetimes. I'm not sure if you guys have a past in this lifetime and you guys are coming back together, you're regrouping, reconciling. But this is like a, 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 a faded meeting and you're probably gonna have relations with this person over and over and over again. You're gonna be with this person for, the, for a long time, by the way. It's like a never ending cycle, a never ending story, a never ending wheel. It just goes round and round and round. So I feel like as, as long as you know this, You know you're going to meet your person constantly over and over and over. So let's keep it positive. Let's keep it fortunate. Let's keep it fun so that they look forward to the next fun moment, the next positive moment, the next adventurous moment. 
You have the Himalayan salt crystal. Absorbs and neutralizes negative energies, toxins, and allergens. Energetically cleanses your space. What negative influences or things do you need to remove from your life? If you come to this person with negative energy, they're going to feel tense about seeing you next. If you come to them with positive emotions, positive talks, positive conversations, positive mindset, they're going to want to soak into that energy again because it's very healing. It's very soothing. And they want to match that. They want to be positive with you. Now, if you have, like, concerns about the connection, then obviously that's something different, you know? But that's something that you're bring, bringing up when, the, when it arises. And then you're talking about it. Excuse me. Then you're talking about it, and then you're getting through it. But if you're um, constantly, like I said in Pal 2, if you're constantly talking about what you're lacking and the fact that you don't, that a lot of bad things are happening all the time and blah, 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 and that's all you talk about every time you get together, then this person's going to associate you with drama and tense energy always. And they want to feel positive. So what negative things can you remove from your, your connection when you guys get together? Maybe you're talking about your ex all the time, and they're like, oh my gosh, would you stop? You know? <clears throat> Just give me those examples. Pile three. You have joyous fun. Yeah, they want, see, that's what I'm saying. They want that fun, that good time. I'm getting, with the Wheel of Fortune, this was giving me a carousel energy. Like just, or you know, like a, a never-ending carousel, a horse, riding a horse. And it's funny because it's not here, but you do have the Ferris wheels. So it's kind of like I was on the same page. I just didn't vocally say I should have. I just, I was so caught up with saying something else. Forgiveness. So, <clears throat> What this tells me is in order to create those missing moments, wanting to be with you again, looking forward to, the, to, to you again, is to get through your obstacles together as a team and not holding grudges against one another. Um, you know, not being afraid to talk about anything that's negative, even if it's, you know, just temp a temporary thing, you know. Or even if it's something that's really concerning you and you can't stop crying about it, let your person in. Um, your person can help you, you know, get through these emotions, you know. The, what I'm talking about here is, you know, if you're constantly complaining about somebody or something and that's all you talk about, that's different. It's different than you going through something very tough and challenging and letting your person be part of it. So, you know, uh, it's okay for you to be vulnerable and open. This person welcomes it. That's what I'm getting with that as well. Next thing here is reignite. So um, this is telling me about that passion, that king of wands, that queen of wands here. You know, bring in that, that passion. Your person is very attracted to you. Bring in the spice in the kitchen, uh, creating those spicy moments together, cooking together even. Bring in the fun. You got fun, fun here. You got reignition. So reigniting each other's engines, bringing the fire, bringing the spice. <clears throat> you have angel of health. This tells me you guys are also good at healing each other. So if your person is coming to you with uh, a concern or, uh, you know, they had a, a bad day, they come to you and you're like, I'll hear you out. Are you okay? And you comfort them and they feel very like, you know, at peace because you have such calming energy and because they look forward to, you know, seeing you because you're very good at listening so if you're a good listener they're going to want to come with come to your attend, come to your 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 aid or be with you so health is they also the other part of this is you know maybe they need you to help them get back on track when it comes to eating right working out etc the leader here that's interesting we talked about the king the king came out twice the emperor and the king of pentacles and the Empress, I think of her as, as king or, you know, royal energy queen. You got the sun here. I lead from the heart. Confident, brilliant, purposeful, courageous, committed, authentic, positive. There you go, positive again. Inspiring, passionate, empowered, visionary, vital, integrous, trustworthy. If you come with all those key ingredients I just mentioned, this person is going to want to be in your energy always because it's very positive. It's very uplifting. It's very empowering. It's very contagious, by the way. You have progress. This is my Winter's Embrace Oracle. If you're interested, I have them for sale. And my Princess Love Dreams and my Lavender Love Dreams Oracle if you're interested. Progress. So this person wants to see, you know, um, that you're going, you, your, your relationship is evolving. It's going places. 
it's not stagnant, it's not boring, it's, it's evolving. That's what your person looks forward to. Uh, wonder, yeah, your person also likes mysterious, I mean mystery. So if you guys, if you're always surprising your person, if you're like buying tickets to like a show, if you're like, hey, if you're like coming with, you, you, you're, uh, uh, you're visiting and you bring your pot of their favorite cooked meal, that reignites them. That makes them miss you more because like, man, she's full of surprises. She's full of fun. And it doesn't even have to be with surprises all the time. It's just saying bring your positive energy because you're the leader here. You're the sun. They just want you to be in your lights, in your fun, in your positive energy so that they can be in that energy as well. You don't always have to cook. You don't always have to like bring stuff. You don't always have to be generous. You don't always have to blah, blah, blah. It's just saying work on yourself when you're not with each other and then bring that energy. I want to know what, why you're so happy. Let, tell, tell me all about it. <laughs> Tell me why you had such a good day yesterday. I want to hear it. I want to live vicariously through you. I want you to share that with me, you know? Wonder. Give them something to talk about. Wonder about also. And and, and, and wonder also. It's like, do new things together. Like, uh, let's, cook to, let's cook together instead of going out to eat all the time. Hey, how about you try watching a show that I love? Or let me watch a show that you love. Let's watch football together. Even though I wouldn't want to watch football. But I want to do it because that's what you love. This is what that tells me. Gentle embrace, trust, reciprocal love. Oh my gosh. Yeah, bringing those intimate moments together. And it doesn't have to be all, you know, in the bedroom, obviously. It can be, you know, having a cup of coffee, uh, watching your favorite movies together. It can be cooking together, like I said. Just cuddling, looking into each other's eyes. Friendship. Make sure your friendship is intact. You have romance here all the way through. Make sure there's also a good friendship component. It says feelings of love and closeness. Friendship is what's going to uh, stabilize you as well. If something comes in between your connection, your relationship, at least you have your friendship to look forward to or to fall back on. You got the world here. That's interesting. Another round circle. The Wheel of Fortune is round. You got this Ferris wheels. This is an infinite thing. This person, you're, you're, just like the world is always turning, you guys are always going to meet each other, always going to evolve together. You might even travel together. This person might even feel like it's your completed puzzle piece. You feel very complete with this person. Oh my gosh, you got the one. Are you kidding me? You got more royalty here. King, the empress, the emperor, the, the one here. You got, oh my gosh, you got the prince and the princess. This person is your royal match. You guys are meant to be together. I'm telling you, it's fated. Oh my gosh, I feel positive about this. All right, so what blessings can I bestow upon you, pile number three? To bring in this, this connection and to help foster the missing, the healthy missing. Not the unhealthy, but the healthy missing. Like, man, I'm doing my thing on my own time. I'm being independent, away from my person, doing my own hobbies and having fun with my friends and family, working on my job and my, ho and my, uh, my responsibilities. And now I can't wait to bring it to you and share with you what I've done and hear about your week. And man, it's so fun. Things will cool down. Yeah, so if you guys ever have like, you know, tough conversations, it cools down after. That's what we said in Pal 2. Knowledge is power. Get to know your person. Get to know their love language. Get to know their spirit language. <laughs> courage. Oh, courage came out twice. Get out of here. And that's what I was saying with the kings here. They come very confident and they're very stable. Confident, brilliant, purposeful, courageous. There you go, courageous. And last one, opportunities. Yeah, seize the day. Make opportunities together and get back to nature. Go out, have fun in nature, perhaps. All right, take care. Thank you for watching. If you like these videos where I give you the answer up front and then I give you advice on how to back up that answer so that your person, uh, you guys can build something foundational together. I'm doing a lot of relationship research, so I'm watching those videos, taking notes, and trying to, you know, uh, incorporate those into my, my life and into my readings. Then I would love to hear about that in the comments. Let me know, and I would love to continue doing those. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one.